Let's bring in Ryan Lamond, co-founder and CEO at NeoVision Wealth Management. Ryan, a pleasure to have you with us this morning. Look, there are a lot of cross currents to digest. Before we go into the broader geopolitics and the economic read through, I want to talk about this bond market. Ret a retreat from 5% on that 10 year yield. Do you buy? 10 year, no. Uh, two years, yes. What's happening is textbook, which is an inversion, which we've seen the past few months. And now is steepening as we head into a potentially economic slowdown slash recession. So 10 years is too long from a duration risk for us still. When you talk about the two year though, what is the logic there? Are you really just kind of monitoring the, the Fed's expectations? We of course know that's a maturity that's tied at the, uh, at the hip to the Fed. Are you then predicting a, a hike or a cut? What is your Fed forecast? Well, the first reason is duration risk. We think there will be quite some volatility and we don't want this to eat our risk budget. The second reason is we think that Q4, potentially Q1, we will have negative growth. So the start of potential talk about uh, rate cuts and this for the short end will pin it down and make the short end uh, more winning than, than the longer term, the longer end. Because typically ahead of a recession, we see a steepening and it's textbook what's happening at the moment. So give us a number then, Ryan. Uh, by the end of the year, where do we hit the two year? Where do we hit the 10 year? Well, the two year, we think it will continue to wobble around uh, 5%. Uh, for the 10 year, we see it more around 4.5 because there are many buyers at, at the 5% and we've seen uh, the limits hit at 5%, whether uh, short covering or people just going long 10 year. But we don't think it, it can stay for long term at, at the five year mark. So why 5% at the two year if you are actually monitoring commodity pressures and commodity risk out of the geopolitics in the Middle East? I mean, you're joining us from Dubai. Walk us through the view there. How does the oil market affect the bond market? Well, uh, the, the oil market, it all depends on what happens geopolitically, to be honest. And this is the big uncertainty. Geopolitically, there's a big risk of a regional war if there's a ground invasion. And there's a lot of talk about, about ground invasion. If there is a ground invasion, then all bets are off. Uh, then even two years doesn't apply anymore. And we just sit on cash and fix deposits. Uh, oil potentially will, will go above $100, but this is, again, all dependent on geopolitics and how far the regional war could go if this thing happens. If there are disruptions in the oil supply, then oil will, 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 will just uh, uh, jump much higher, uh, um, dollar will, will rally, um, and, and yes, uh, uh, on, on the rates, it's all bets are off uh, because it's, it's very much unpredictable. When you say all bets are off, Ryan, does that mean you're going to completely pull out of the market? What's the hedge there? So absolutely. So today we're sitting on 50% cash that is earning 6.2% on fixed deposits. Um, uh, we increased uh, uh, our gold positions uh, when we had a dip uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so we're relatively hedged. Uh, we have positions on Japan equities, Brazilian equities, which are geographically quite far from what is happening around. And we have some long term private equity positions. So we are in a defensive portfolio today until we have more clarity on the geopolitical situation. So what is then the correlation that you're monitoring? Ryan, let me nerd out with you for a second. When we were looking at the inflationary kind of increase in 2021 post pandemic, the correlation between the bond market yields and the oil market was almost 100 percent. The idea that if you had higher oil prices, higher commodity pressures, inflation was therefore going to be higher and then predicted, of course, into the markets. At what point, at what level on oil does that bond market correlation completely get inverted? Uh, that's very hard to say in the current states, uh, states of play. Um, if, if we, because you have a geopolitical risk that is happening at the moment, the geopolitical uh, um, tensions, potential war, which is affecting oil prices. So this we cannot exclude from the fundamental rise in oil prices. If we exclude what is happening on the geopolitical level, today oil would be probably trading, trading in the 80s. And uh, this is playing a role in that, in that correlation between the two. Uh, we see that that correlation breaking down because inflationary pressures are going down. And as we see more uh, unemployment, this is unavoidable, inflationary pressures will go down even further, which will break down that 
uh, correlation that you just mentioned. So 100% was probably the peak, and now it will just uh, go down and break down. Well, we'll of course see if that's true. Ryan, uh, we've already done the bond market and the commodity market. We might as well throw the equity market into it as well. You said you were in 50% cash. Why not have more exposure to, say, American tech stocks? I mean, they're borrowing at, at near treasury levels. That feels like a pretty safe bet, wouldn't you think? Uh, we don't. We think it's quite overvalued at where it is today. So let's take NVIDIA, which is one, one of the big drivers of the U.S. stock markets. Uh, today, President Biden has taken a decision to stop Chinese companies from buying U.S. chips. So this will affect NVIDIA. Let's not forget that 39 percent of NVIDIA's returns uh, revenue is coming from just two clients. There was a big demand from Chinese clients ahead of President Biden's decision. So we don't see big upside there. However, if there is a big regional war, potentially a limited World War III, if you will, where multiple nations enter and we have a big dip in stock markets, then we are absolutely buyers. Yes, but not at current levels.